So, previously we talked about the situation when we start to consider the geometric effect, mismatch effect. And uh, the go back, we still said the total free energy change in reality would have three contributions. The first term due to the volume free energy, okay, between the uniform phase and uh, the compositional uh, fluctuated uh, two related phases. The second term due to the chemical mismatch at the interface. The third term due to the coherency and uh, difference or the slight geometric mismatch. And then, as we said before, the total free energy change would be the summation of these three contributions. The volume free energy term, the chemical term, the geometric or the coherence stream mismatch term. Okay, and then, as we said before, in order for the spontaneous spinodal decomposition to occur within the bracket, the three term summation has to be smaller than zero. Okay, that's what we have said before. And then for a given composition within the coherent spin nodal, for a given composition within the coherent spin nodal, now we have to consider the geometric term. The wavelength lambda, it has to satisfy certain relationship. So we rearrange this relationship. We keep the 2k over lambda square on the left. So this term has to be smaller than the negative of the other two terms added up together. Okay. So the 2k uh, smaller divided by lambda square term has to be smaller than the square term than the minus of the second derivative plus the a geometric term, okay? And then if we rearrange this equation, we can have the lambda square term. The wavelength square term has to be greater than the 2k over the summation of these two terms with a negative sign. Of course, lambda square term would be positive, 2k would be positive, and the the denominator has to be negative because we have this negative sign over there. And as a result, the lambda, the wavelength, has to be greater than the square root term. Okay. So let's do not get into the detail, but essentially what it says is that the lambda or the wavelength for the concentration fluctuation or the so-called concentration modulation has to be larger than certain critical value, okay? In essence, the phases formed, the neighboring phases formed, one, we men remember we said one would be richer than the host or the starting point. One would be leaner than the starting point. The phases formed while spinodal decomposition will be finally separated quite often. We, talk, we are talking about the, the separation of the wavelengths is on the order of 10 nanometer, but they cannot be too finely divided. For example, you almost never see spinodal decomposition when the wavelength is around the 1 nanometer, because if the lambda is too small, then this relationship cannot be satisfied, okay? Or we say the interfacial energy contribution, this term, when the lambda goes to almost zero, then this um, chemical interfacial term would be increased towards infinity and would make it impossible for the entire data G to be smaller than zero. So that's the essence. The spin in order for spin order to decompose, decompose, the neighboring phase will be quite often finely divided because we are talking about uh, the diffusion into neighboring region and it can it cannot go over long distance, too long distance. But at the same time, but at the same time, they cannot be too finely divided. For example, the, the separation cannot be like uh, one angstrom half half nanometer, 
because otherwise the lambda term goes almost towards zero. This chemical interfacial term become to tend to increase towards infinity and make this summation almost impossible to be smaller than zero. That's the essence. Okay? It's indeed what people observe in the experiment. For here, we are looking at the copper, cobalt phase diagram. Copper on the left, cobalt on the right. Okay? And a higher temperature would be liquid, and lower temperature is more like a pyrotactic. And then you would find the lines so-called uh, chemical spinodal line within the miscibility gap, okay? This long dash dot line is for chemical spinodal, which means the line corresponding to the second order derivative of Gibbs free energy with respect to composition is zero, okay? And then, if we are within this chemical spinodal, we may observe the spinodal decomposition. And on the right, we show from literature the TEM um, image and the related energy dispersive spectroscopy elemental information for a specific alloy in the copper cobalt system. 90% copper, 10% cobalt alloy and you see this scale bar is only 15 nanometer and you see that this so-called undulation of this wavelength is quite small around 40 nanometer or even smaller and uh, this lamellar structure with very fine wavelengths we're talking about uh, 10 nanometer in this case around 30 nanometer modulation this shows for spinodal decomposition in comparison for typical uh, nucleation growth which we also see um, the malar structure quite often the wavelengths is at least hundreds of nanometer or even several microns so this shows the fine layered structure formed due to spinodal decomposition. They have to be finely separated, but not too finely. It cannot be, the wavelengths cannot be like one nanometer or half nanometer. They are quite often on the 10 nanometer scale, okay? They have to be fine because of the short distance for diffusion allowed, but they cannot be too small due to the um, in reality, the interfacial chemical energy and the interfacial string energy are not in reality, not zero. Okay?